Joining me now is former acting director of national intelligence. He's former ambassador Rick Grinnell. It's great to see you back on, Rick. Good to see you. You know, Senator Lindsey Graham said more, quote, damning. It's good to see you. More, quote, damning government documents will soon be declassified in the FBI's botched Trump Russia probe, maybe the Flynn probe. What's the next shoe to drop? Such a good question, Elizabeth. Uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what comes next, but there's plenty there. There's, there are many reports, many letters, uh, many pieces of information, which re really just point to uh, the very early days of how this investigation was developed. The many warning signs were ignored, and I think that's where many people have trouble, is that if we would have been able to see the full package of the information, um, instead of having it uh, really edited down and, and pushed into a direction that the head of the FBI clearly wanted it to go in, uh, I think most people would have come to the same conclusion that Russian propaganda from the beginning had infiltrated into the Steele dossier. And so uh, the warning signs were there, and now we're only seeing them later on. We've got to fix this problem. We've got to make sure that government isn't weaponized. And then we see, you know, just yesterday, uh, again now, the president's individual taxes are released. And this is yet another example of how bureaucrats inside Washington can weaponize government against the people that they don't like. It's very scary for every single person. Yeah. If one of your enemies starts working inside the government, they are going to use the tools of government against you and there's nothing you can do about it. This has got to get cleaned up. You know, Senator Chuck Schumer, remember in early January 2017, said the intelligence community can get you every which way from Sunday. You know, they act like accusations are tantamount to a conviction. That's a feel of what went on, that the Obama administration used the FBI and intelligence forces against an opposition campaign based on Russian disinformation financed by, partially, mostly largely financed by the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign, and that the FBI and investigated a Russian spy who was a source for the anti-Trump steel dossier. I mean, I don't think anybody could have written this. This is, uh, you know, fact is stranger than fiction. Well, let's also remember that uh, bureaucrats in Washington don't have the power to just launch into many of these uh, investigations, especially investigations that take a long time, unless their superiors know about it and approve it, or their superiors knowingly look the other way. And I think that's what we got to get to the bottom of. There's no question that there were recommendations to drop this Michael Flynn case. And then there was a meeting at the White House that Joe Biden attended and Susan Rice and others. And somehow, after that meeting, there seemed to be a new vigor to go after uh, Flynn and others. And so I, I think it's pretty clear that the evidence shows that higher ups became very political in trying to go after the Trump team. And, and let's be very honest, there's a big cry now about a peaceful transition of power from the media elites and from the left, saying, once again, they're sure that their candidate is going to win, and so they want to know, are we going to have a peaceful transition of power? Let me just be very clear. Donald Trump won in 2016, and there was not a peaceful transition of power. The meetings and the schedules show that the intensity against Donald Trump and his team got more intense, got hotter as soon as there was uh, an election uh, finish and we knew who was moving into the White House. Yeah. And at that point in time, should the FBI have stopped their Trump Russia probe and have should they have stopped the Flynn probe because we've got newly revealed FBI text messages in and around the time of that January 5th 2017 Obama briefing with Obama Susan Rice Joe Biden uh, 
FBI text messages behind the scenes saying it was a madhouse. Officials are scrambling, groping for information to support their theories that they all went and bought personal professional liability insurance, fearing they could be sued over the misconduct going on behind the scenes at the FBI. We have former FBI official, uh, you know, uh, William Barrett, saying there was an attitude, just get Trump, that this was, a, you know, a big, powerful investigation that they wanted to be in on to get a big scalp to, you know, stick to the wall. Uh, and, you know, that this was uh, be a, you know, a feather in their cap to do something like this when they weren't letting the facts and the evidence take them where, the, take them to the conclusion. Instead, they had a theory and they were trying to shoehorn the facts into their theory. So do you think they should have stopped the Trump Russia probe, stopped the Flynn probe at that moment in December 2016? Yes, the people who were looking at the information in full recommended that they stop it. This should have been stopped. And let me also be very clear. The FBI is not the only agency that had red flags and that had individuals stepping forward to say, this is baloney. And those other agencies should come forward and declassify the documents that they are hell-bent on not releasing. And I don't want to go any further but I'm getting to the point where I'm getting really impatient with those individual agencies that know exactly what I'm talking about, that know exactly what documents they need to release. They've been called upon to do it, and they're playing games. This is not good for Are transparency. Are these intelligence agencies? Transparent yes. Transparency okay. is not political. I don't care if it's a week before the election, a week after the election, or a year before the election. We shouldn't be thinking about election time. We should be thinking about transparency. And this is a system inside Washington that knows how to protect its own and knows how to go after people who raise their voice. I, I, I think that it's very important for people to understand right now, we need to have an outsider continuing to push this system in Washington because we see every day how they are weaponizing government against their political enemies. This is crazy. This is how governments fall it's, and end, and, and we cannot have this. Yeah. We need to have people understand it's the serious. outsiders need to change this place. It's a very serious situation. Final, final, final question. Will the documents and the, uh, that you want these intelligence agencies to release, will it show FBI or intelligence officials perjuring themselves before the FISA court? Because it seems like the FISA court was not aware about the information behind the Steele dossier and, you know, the alleged Russian spy feeding disinformation into the FBI three, via that Steele dossier. Will it point to perjury before the FISA court? Look, I'm not going to play the Washington game of leaking partial classified information to, to have some sort of a win. What I'm calling for is transparency. I'm calling for uh, all of the reports that have been pushed aside and classified to, tell, uh, to make sure that the whole truth doesn't come out. Those documents need to come out. The public can handle it. This is not giving away sources and methods. There may be some context mm -hmm. that some of these agencies want to share. I'm not here to say that everything is a slam dunk. It's all about nuance and context, but more information, the better. And we do have some documents that tell okay. a deeper story. Oh, Rick Grinnell. Okay, we'll be staying on it. We have been covering this for some time now as best we can. And thanks to your help. We appreciate you coming on, Rick Grinnell. Thanks for your insights and perspective. Come back soon.